Good evening, good afternoon, and possibly good morning. Today, we are going to do the one act version of my play, Sisters Through a Window. I am so excited because this is the very first reading of the play, which is based on my award-winning short story. Once upon a time, I did have a mother named B and an aunt named Gertie, and I had an idea to write a story about them. It's fiction, but the names are the same as they were to protect no one. So tonight, we're going to hear my play being read by this wonderful cast, and you'll get their credits in a little bit. And I just want to sit back and watch and revel in Sisters Through a Window. Enjoy. The stage is wide open, perhaps with levels, with a large white backdrop that can take projections and film. Nostalgic and atmospheric music play. The light finds a middle-aged man, Sam Sardoff, old before his time. He is sitting. It is 1941 and Sam is inside looking out of a window. An old black and white silent home movie is projected. It flickers and has flaws. In the home movie, we see two young women and their mother frolicking in the surf. Once I had two daughters and they were sisters. Even when I became dead and they became old, they were still sisters, more than sisters. Even with eight years separating them, nothing could separate them. We see an old woman in the hospital on a telephone. B, B, can you hear me? It's your sister Gertie, the one in the hospital for three months, the one you never call or visit, that Gertie. Hold on, Gert, I have something on the stove. I'm cooking at Simmers like Mama used to make. If it comes out right, it'll be as tasteless as cardboard. That's how Daddy liked it. But I know your tricks. B, you're not cooking. I cannot smell it from here. But if you really are making Mama's Simmers, why not put some in a Tupperware and bring it to me? This hospital food is from hunger. You know, I want to come out there, Gertie, but you also know I don't drive. And I'm at the mercy of my daughter, Rose. And Rose is not from the great drivers either. Oh, she knows how to put her car in A for Alexander's and B for Bloomingdale's, but that's it. To get her off this for Cocteau, Long Island is not easy. I can't believe I live here in a place where you're dead without a car. But where should I go? Florida, God's waiting room. She said, Ma, you're getting old and I want to keep my eye on you. Such an eye she keeps, you shouldn't know from it. I do everything by myself. I push my wagon to the supermarket and I shop and I... Oh. Do I need to hear your life story? I'm sick and I'm your little sister. Doesn't the railroad run anymore? Stop me if I'm wrong. But did you say you were my little sister? Little? Or you may be shrinking? Me? Hey. Gertie, enough already. Jack is dead. And I may be joining him. Don't you want to see me first? Of course I do. Listen, let me call you back tomorrow or the next day and we'll make a plan. If I'm still here. Oh, you'll still be there. Nothing could kill you, after all. You're the young one. Gertie slams the phone down and the lights black out on them. A jazzy Kern song plays and... Time is like a window. <laughs> if you stare hard enough through it, it shows you the past and the future at the same time. The present, you have to look for yourself. 
At least it was that way in the fall of 1941 at the New Lots movie house. The lights come up on Miss Lee behind the lobby concession stand. We see large posters for the current attraction, Fred Astaire and Rita Hayworth in You Were Never Lovelier. A young Gertie enters. I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Lee. My mother would not let me go until I scrubbed the kitchen floor, all the while telling me to get married already before it's too late. Of course, my little sister B just started her new job as an assistant bookkeeper, and she has no time for housework. <laughs> Ooh, Rita Hayworth. Isn't she gorgeous? I would never report you, Gert. You're my best friend. And I noticed you dyed your hair my color. Very flattering. It's actually a combo, a cross between you and Miss Hayworth. I'm still flattered, maybe more so. <laughs> so, Miss Lee, did you go out on the town after the last showing? Don't make me laugh. I went straight home to make sure my mother was still alive. She's almost 85 now. What about you? I had a date. <gasps> Don't make me pee in my pants. You say it like it was nothing. Come on, tell me. Don't leave out a comma or I'll scream. Well, he was a nice boy, but a little younger than me. How young? 24. And you're 27, so? 29, going on death. Well, he asked. I told, he excused himself and went to the men's room in the restaurant and never came back. Oh, you are kidding. I paid the check and went home. The dirty swine. Well, time to let the vultures in. Miss Lee opens the door and only a couple of patrons enter, an older couple and a young man. Thursday matinees, you could shoot deer in the balcony. I think we'll wind up eating the hot dogs ourselves. Speaking of the balcony, last night what I saw, I was in shock, Gert. Two women were kissing. Can you imagine? I mean, isn't it unnatural? Not if they're not Jewish. Box of jujubes, please. Wait a minute. Shouldn't you be in school? How old are you? 21 and a half. Why aren't you in the army? Why aren't you? Don't talk smart to Miss Lee. She has the full authority to kick you out and never let you back in to see any movie, ever. That's right. And you can forget about your admission price being refunded. You're lucky we didn't call the truant officer. You two old bags don't scare me. Suddenly, a huge burly Bluto of a man enters and comes to the ladies' rescue. Hey, you watch the way you talk to ladies. Now get to your seat and watch the movie or you'll have me to reckon with. Um, I'll have two hot dogs with sauerkraut, relish, and ketchup and a box of Malamars, and an extra large popcorn with butter and extra salt. Is that enough? It has to be. I need to get through the door of my truck and fit in the cab. I wonder if he will even fit in the seat here. <laughs> so, Jack. How do you know my name? It's right there, over your heart. It's Jack Walensky. Uh, so, Jack, may I recommend you sit in one of our comfortable and roomy loge seats? Maybe you would be able to show me which seat is the roomiest. I might be able. She's very able. First, I better hit the john and make room for all this food. Meet you inside. Jack, such a masculine name. And he drives a truck. The UPS. Oh, he'll go far. If he has enough gas. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Gert, go sit down by Man Mountain Dean, but don't ruin it by telling him how old you are. The lights shift to the sawed-off apartment where we see young B at home with her immigrant parents. Ma, can you bring me some seltzer? The thing about Vindas is that even though you can see through them both ways, <laughs> most people never really look. Gussie, 
get up and get for yourself. I'm in the middle from ripping a scene. B, Ma. My name is B, not Gussie. I named you Gussie after my grandmother in Russia. May she rest in peace. I don't know from any B. A B, maybe they'll sting. Ma, I'm thirsty and I'm sick. Who wouldn't be thirsty eating all them policies and making mess on my clean couch? Maybe their father, who sits in the window all day doing nothing, could get for you something to drink. Me? I'm busy now. There is a knock at the door. Nobody moves. Oh, very smear. Somebody gets the door. Gussie! It's B, Ma! And I'm sick. B has no choice but to get up off the couch and answer the door. She opens the door, and there is the huge, burly form of Jack Walensky. Excuse me, but would you happen to have a glass of water? Hot or cold? What? Hot or cold? The, uh, water, I mean? <laughs> cold, please. But I bet when you touch a glass of ice water, it heats up to a boil. Oh, Mr. UPS man, what are you delivering? <laughs> Gussie? My name is B, Ma! <laughs> My name is B. I'm Jack. I can read that. <laughs> mm, even in Braille. <laughs> it's even nicer in Braille. Gussie? It's B, Ma! I'm helping out my friend. We're moving all the furniture out of the apartment over you. Oi, that's Pinky. She died again. You can only die once, Ma. We all hated her. She was such a mean old crone and she had pink hair. A demon. May she rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> she used to yell at all the kids if they made noise under our window, and then she'd pour down a pot of boiling water on you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's why I wear long sleeves. You could wear anything and look good. How is your stomach ache, Gussie? It's B, Ma! And suddenly I'm all better. <laughs> My wife, Sadie, sews. I used to sew too. Every day, stitch, stitch, until I decided no more stitching it together. It is time to look on the whole fabric of life. That's when I sat down by this window. I wanted to see the world, but I didn't want to leave home. As long as the glass is clean, I found I could see everything. I watch it all. <laughs> There's Tilly, <laughs> sitting in the middle of the gutter uh, on a bridge chair, all dressed up and eating a can of peas. <laughs> Where else can you see that, eh? Of course, my wife Sadie doesn't approve of my early retirement. So she stopped talking on me. That's okay too. And now you maybe wonder if I see how this uh, ladies man from UPS can juggle two girlfriends. <laughs> that was the easy part. But dating two sisters who lived under the same roof and not knowing it? <laughs> that was a miracle. On Tuesday and Friday nights, there he is with my Gertie, picking her up at the New Lots movie theater. You look wonderful outside of uniform. I could say the same about you. How about some Chinese tonight, Gertie? As long as you get to stop my fortune cookie. <sighs> On Thursday and Saturday night, I look down the block and watch mm -hmm. as he picks up my Gussie on Snedeker Avenue under the candy store sign. For the freshest flower in Brooklyn. You're the fresh one, Jack. 
Do you feel like Italian B? Sure. I love a good uh, sausage hero. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what was even more amazing is that neither of the sisters had a clue who the other was dating. This went on all through a frigid November, but both sisters only felt warmth. Until the cold, rainy night of December 6th, 1941. Close your coat, B. It's not summer. Don't you wish it was, Gertie? Then we would be in those waves again in Rockaway. Those waves that can swallow you whole and spit you out on the sand. Don't you just long for summer? Of course I do. And it'll be here soon enough with the flies and the humidity. Thank God they cool air the movie house, even if me and Miss Lee have to lug in the ice and turn on the fans. What's it called when you go to the movies on your night off from working at the movies? Stupid. Really stupid. <laughs> no, actually, it's a busman's holiday. And we need it some time together. We've both been so busy at work. You've been working late some nights, B. I'm proud of you. Oh, gosh. Didn't you just love Rita? I think she was more beautiful in this picture than the last. I hope Fred Astaire keeps her on in his, as his partner forever. So much better than Ginger Rogers. Didn't you think her? Uh, Ginger's gone serious now. She doesn't want to dance anymore. I read it in one of my movie magazines. You know what this movie makes me want to do? Dance. But it's pouring out. Who cares? Come on, B. You be a stare. Why am I always a stare? Just because I'm the younger sister? Yes, just because. And because I have the red hair in the family. From a bottle. And the legs. Never forget, I got the legs. Yeah, I know. And my legs came from a piano. Your legs are fine. Like mom says, good big farm girl legs to plow all of Russia. Now dance. <laughs> I'm getting soaked, but who cares? Mom would kill us if she saw us down, dancing down Livonia Avenue in the rain. Do you want to get ammonia? Do a time step now, B. I would if I knew how. <laughs> How's this? Suddenly they turn, and there is Jack. Jack! Jack! You know, you know him? him? Of course I do. It's Jack. I know his name. You girls know each other? Wait a minute. Is this? This isn't the guy who picked you up at the movies, is it? He didn't pick me. Listen, I can explain. Fine. Explain. You've been dating my sister. Sister? You didn't know we were sisters? How would I know? The arms of a Popeye and the brain of Sweet Pea. We live in the same house. We share a room. But how would I know that? I've never been there. B never lets me walk her past the candy store on the corner. And you make me pick you up at the movies and leave you on New Lots Avenue. I had no idea you were sisters. You never talked about each other. You never mentioned me? It was too soon. You never mentioned me? That's different. How? It just is. Please, girls, let's at least get out of the rain. This storm has just begun. I can't believe you betrayed me. I betrayed you? You never told me you were dating. Neither did you. Just some big fat lug from the movies. Hey. Listen to me, B. You're turning your back on your sister? Jack, you have to choose. What? You can't have us both, so choose. My sister is right. Choose. I can't choose. You're both wonderful girls. We know that. But you can't have two wives. Next to one a harem. Wives? Who said anything about wives or marriage or... You, you did! did. He asked you? Not in so many words, but he talked all the time about a house on Staten Island. A two-story cottage, didn't you, Jack? I... He wooed me with four rooms in Queens with an eaten kitchen. That was after the honeymoon in Niagara Falls. Mine was going to be in Miami. I like that better. Why didn't you want to take me to Miami, Jack? You know I love the beach. How many kids? Four. Two. Can you afford to support six kids and two wives, Jack? 
The Mormons do what I think. I can't think. I just can't. Can I just walk you home? Of course. And then you can tell us which one you want. I think the storm has passed. That's what you think. Well, who is it going to be? Tomorrow. I'll tell you tomorrow. I really like him. So do I. Does he know how old you are? That's not fair. All's fair in love and war. The lights black out and we hear FDR's voice on the radio. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Very smear. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. Now what? Now, I take in distress for Mrs. Auslander downstairs who is dying of cancer. And your father sits in the window. That's what it is now. Life goes on. I guess so. Uh, I'm late for work at the a &P. And I have to work too, at the movies. One week later, the marquee for the New Lots movie theater advertises Shadow of the Thin Man. Jack enters in a new uniform. Well, if it isn't the shadow of the not-so-thin man. I never knew the U.S. Army made uniforms that big. Is Gertie here? What if she is? She doesn't want to talk to you unless you're here to propose. Miss Lee, I never said I wanted him to propose. Yes, you... Well, excuse me for living. I'll just go back and check on our supply of real creamery butter. I think you better. Gert? I know. You want me to wait for you, right? Gertie, how old are you? Old enough to know better, but young enough not to care. Really? I'm 20, Jack. We hear a phone ring, and on the other end is B's grown son. It is 1984. Mom, you have to come see your sister. It's time. There's not much time left, Mom. Come see Gertie. Will you wait for me, Gertie? When I get back, I want to marry you. Will you wait? The scene shifts to the apartment where Sadie and Sam are alone. There is a knock at the door and Sam doesn't move, so Sadie is forced to answer it. Oi, I thought it was the giant from Jack and the Bean Sprout. I came to talk to your husband. Be my guest. I want your permission to marry your daughter, Mr. Sodoff. Which one? Gertie, may I have your permission? <sighs> <sighs> So whenever I say, one of my daughters walks away with a broken heart. What do you need from me permission? It's 1941, and we're at war. Permission he needs. Gertie wanted your blessing. Hmm. From a father who sits by the vendor, looking for seven years? Why? Why what? Why do you sit in the window? A very good question, but no one has ever asked. You seem a good man, and very big. I can remember when I first came to this country, and all my friends who had come before me had bragged that there was gold in the streets. So, when I looked down in the gutter, that first day off of Ellis Island, 
I found out that they were right. They didn't lie. There really was gold in the streets. I saw it and I bent down to pick it up. But when I got it closer to my face, I could see that the gold in my hand was chewing tobacco and nothing more. Chewing tobacco? Mm. From that day on, I questioned everything in America, but I did what I had to do. I married Sadie. She had five children. The sons got married and left. And me, I worked until one day in 1934, when my sewing machine broke. I decided that was it. I was done. That was when the father sat himself in the window and watched the world go by. So, can you marry my Gertie and not break her sister's heart? I didn't think so. Nothing is that easy. Go. Go to war. Then come back and get married. Thank you, Mr. Sodoff. So, what do you think? Your daughter is finally getting married. Of course, he could still be killed in the war, but at least someone finally asked. <laughs> talking to me? I'm talking to the wall. What else? <sighs> you didn't give away her real age, did you? <laughs> What does a vol know from age? Good. But did the vol eat his supper? <laughs> the vol did. And it was delicious. I'll give compliments to the chef. <laughs> if this window could look out into the future, it would see my Gussie crying to see her older sister become her younger sister through the vendor. If I squint, I can see Gertie and Jack married and the years flying by. But I can also see my Gertie having to count on her fingers to remember what age she was supposed to be. My Gussie will find a husband and have those four children that Jack promised. But when my son-in-law Jack will make a 50th birthday party for his wife, my Gussie will not attend. Neither will I, because I'll be dead. Through this window, I can see the future. Jack gone and my little Gertie in a hospital, waiting to join him. Well, I finally made it. You can't imagine the trip from Long Island, endless, and don't even talk about the money I had to spend. This was not an easy trip to undertake, and I haven't been feeling 100% myself. Let me tell you, Gertie, Brooklyn has changed so much since I left. I don't know how you people can stand the Michigas. I mean, the noise, the traffic, the congestion, and the rudeness of the people at this godforsaken hospital. I asked for Mrs. Walensky, and that nurse out there looked at me like I was talking Swahili. This hospital is a mess. It's enough to turn your hair gray. It did. Six months, B. Six months I've been here, and now you visit? I got old waiting. How old? What? How old, Gertie? Can you remember any more? Now that Jack is gone, do you know how old you are? I don't have to listen to you and your ancient gripes. Jack chose me. And you never got over it. I was 20 years old, and you were my oldest sister. Then boom, I was the oldest sister. 
It wasn't that he chose you, Gert. It was that you aged me. Do you know what that felt like for 40 years? You turned me into a liar so that you could be seen to be telling the truth for over 40 years. Once I had two daughters. You're turning your back on your sister? And they were sisters. Gert, don't be stupid. Gertie. Gertie. I'm sorry it took me so long to visit. You don't have to punish me anymore. She gets up from her chair and gently pulls Gertie toward her. She gasps. It is clear that Gertie has died. Nurse! Nurse! Oh, oh God, nurse! Sam in 1941 looks at his young daughters through the window. Look at them, so young, but so serious. I only see them through the glass, and the raindrops make a kind of prism. I can't hear what they say, but this much I know. They are like the two girls I once saw at the beach, riding a tandem bicycle their legs pumping like two rows of perfect stitches on a pair of pants. And I know that those sisters, through a window, they'll always be walking in tandem through the years, inseparable. One thing I know as I see them through the dots of rain on the glass, Whatever else changes, nothing will ever change their hearts. Curtain, 